Okay guys, I'm going to record the quick video here and it's going over on how to read the discord.js documentation. If you're developing the discord bot using discord.js, it is imperative that you come read the documentation and actually take a good look through. So when you're working on your bot now and in the future, you can refer to here and actually help yourself first and foremost before having to go to Google or a Discord server such as mine, Nurcave Development. We're just gonna dive right in, right here from the start page. So let's say you have some issue. You want to kick a guild member, kick someone from a voice channel. So there's two parts of this. Kick is what you want to do. I'm actually like literally just write this out. So kick someone from a voice channel. There's two parts of this. There's an action, which is kick. And then what the person, which is someone. Then where? Voice channel. So you have a few things here. Action, person, channel. So how can you use the documentation to break this down? You go ahead and click on documentation. You'll come here to the overview page, the welcome page with some basic information on installing discord.js and some example usage. And if you look over here at the left side, you'll see a bunch of links here. Some classes which you might see familiar. You might have seen like message embed or text channel, stuff like that. If you scroll down more, you'll see type definitions, which gives you more information on the specific typing, such as um, roles.cache.size or message.channel, which can be a guild channel, such as a text channel, a news channel, whatever. So this sidebar goes over everything that the discord.js library has to offer. So if you go back here, we have an action. You have three different things, an action, a person, and a channel. So we're gonna start from, in this case, the person here. Now, what is this person? This person is in your guild, your server or your guild. And anyone who is in your server or guild can be referred to as a guild member. They're a member of your guild. So there's actually a class you can use called a guild member. And if you scroll down the list and we go to guild member, you will see a whole bunch of properties and methods associated. Properties can be something like, um, think of it as a person. So you have your hands, your arms, so like the length of how many fingers you have on your hand or how tall you are, your size of your shoes or your feet. Those can be properties. The methods, so properties describe something. Methods actually do something. There's an action involved. So if you want to wave your hand, that would be a method. So it could be something like wave hand. And wave hand can take in some parameters. So direction, what direction should it you wave your hand in. Um, duration, how long should you wave your hand in? That's what these properties can take into place. So if you go to a method such as ban, you'll see parameters in here, which you could pass into that specific method. So in this case, we're at the guild member method and we have different properties such as checking if that guild member is bannable, what guild that guild member is a member of. Uh, when they join the server, joined at their nickname, if they have a nickname set, it will show you that nickname. So those are different descriptions of that guild member in that guild. And then methods are like, what can you do with that guild member? You can ban them, you can check their permissions in a specific channel, you can set their nickname, stuff like that. So that just gives you a deeper overview of what properties and methods mean here on the specific class in the discord.js documentation. So if you go back here to this little text document I have, we end up at guild member. Now you want to kick someone from a channel. So the next thing you want to check here is, well, 
This person is probably going to be in the voice channel if you're going to kick them. How can we check if that member is in the voice channel? Well, when you're here at the specific class page, you should look through the properties, and you should look through the methods that's relevant to what you're trying to do. And these properties and methods are going to be named in a way to help you detect its relevancy. So voice channel, <clears throat> that's something that has to do with it. It's not an action. So if it's not an action, it's going to be a property. So you know to look under the properties tab or the voice channel that that guild member is in. So if you go through, keep going through, here at the bottom, we're going to find the property called voice. And it gives you a description, the voice state of this member. It gives you a type, which is voice state. So you're just going to go ahead and just click on that to get more information on this class, on this constructor. And you see more channel, more properties, and more methods, even some parameters that you can pass into this class. So this class here, voice state, basically gives you more information on the voice state for the skilled member. What voice channel they're connected to. If they're muted, if they're deafened, um, their connection to it. They're speaking the channel, if they're streaming the sand channel. And then here are some methods that you can do associated with these different properties and their current state in the voice channel. So we now know now how to get the voice channel, that channel that the guild member is in, the person is in. But lastly, we want to kick them. Now, like we discussed before, kicking someone, that's an action. If it's an action, that means it's a method. So we should look at the methods, methods list over here, which the first one actually is, just like it has the description of the method here, the name, it's kick. And just like it describes here, kick. It kicks the member from the voice channel. You run this method, and with that method, if it's like member, that voice, that kick, these little parameters, these little parentheses, this initiates, this identifies that this is a method, that this actually does something. There's an action behind it, meaning it will kick them from the voice channel. Oh, I can't really, you know, test it here, but if you were to test this on someone else who you can actually kick from a voice channel on your server, kick from your server, this method will work. And basically, the way you'll want to do this, let's say if you're doing this from a command, right? In this command, you may have like properties such as run message args, right? So what you could do in this case is message. Let's see, just like in this case, we're going to get, just kick yourself in this case. So actually, no, const bob. Let's say bob message.guild.members hash dot get bob id and this represents bob so you want to kick bob from the voice channel that he's in so if you do bob that voice because remember voice represents the voice state it's a property the voice state of that member and then we have that method here kick it does something it's an action this allows you to kick bob from the voice channel and this is going to return the promise and basically returns you the guild member that you just kicked from the voice channel. So you see here, from top to bottom, we broke down what we want to do and how we could utilize Discord.js's documentation to do that specific thing. I'm gonna kind of teach you some pro tips of utilizing the documentation. Most developers out there using Discord.js, newer at least, are going to be using the stable version of Discord.js. However, if you want to go back and look at different versions, you can by changing the version here. So if you want to look at how things looked in Discord v11, you can do that. If you want to switch to the master branch, you can actually see what is currently and actively being developed on here for Discord.js by switching to the master. But by default, 
you're going to end up here at the stable branch of the documentation. Secondly, if you want to quickly search up something at the docs, such as, you know, taking a, a guild member from a voice channel, we already know voice state represents the voice state for a guild member. So if you go to voice state, you can see the class here related to voice state. But if you want to find a specific method, let's see if you already know the method. Sometimes the method might not show up, but if you just click the class, you'll find the method there. But let's say if you want to do something like guild member ID. Or again, sometimes it'll be a little bit weird with how it shows up, but if you just go to guild member, you can find what you need. But this search bar is really useful for finding quick information here in the documentation. Secondly, examples are pretty useful if you just want some basic examples such as welcome messages, embeds, banning and muting, or webhooks. I highly recommend you take a look through this. Then some new topics such as voice and uh, partials are really useful to look at going forward as you start to read through the documentation more. Anyways, I'm going to wrap it up here with this video on how to better read the Discord.js documentation. Again, if you are doing Discord.js bot development, I highly, highly recommend, again, I say it's imperative that you take a look and actually read through this documentation and make looking at this documentation a habit when you're working through your bot, especially for the newer guys coming into Discord and gals coming into Discord.js bot development. That's it, guys. I will see you in the next video. Peace.